Hey, it's Chris Aiken from Chris Aiken Presents, the Classic Metal Show, and the Seth Williams Show. Now, we know it's frustrating to have to use this website for videos, that website for podcasts, and still another for the live shows. Well, let's end that shit right now. Get the Locals app and get it all in one place. This is free, folks. You don't have to pay to get most of the great content that we're doing. Like I said, it is free. On your phone or device, just go to Locals.com in your iOS or Google Play Store, install it, and create an account. Open the app, surf to the search from the bottom, and type in Classic Metal Show. Then click Join. That's it. Once you join, you can click on the triangle button at the bottom and you can select from videos, live streams, both past and active, or podcasts. Watch and listen right there. When a stream is live, you can participate in the chat right from that screen if you choose. If you want our exclusive content, just click support when you visit the Classic Metal Show community. It's simple, and it's the best way to stay engaged with all of my shows. So sign up today. Hail and kill. Hi, it's David from the Dead Daisies, and you're watching CMS TV. All right! Listen up! Hold on to your seats. Grab your girls, grab your beer. Hey everybody, this is Charlie from Anthrax, and you are listening to Today's Food Dog. This is Mark Metcalf, and you are listening to Today's Food Dog with Bailey Domain Cleveland Radio. You are listening to Today's Food Dog with Bailey on Domain Cleveland Radio. Yes, Kato Kalen listens to this all the time. What's going on, everybody? It's Bill Bailey with today's Boondoggle. And real quick housekeeping note, if you're watching us on YouTube or Rumble or BitChute or Odyssey, please hit that follow and subscribe button. And if you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple, Google, uh, whatever podcast platform you utilize, please hit that follow and subscribe button so we can continue to bring you conversations like the one I'm bringing you today. We are catching up with Chris from the band Testament. What's going on, man? How you doing? Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's my pleasure, man. Been looking forward to it. Uh, looks like you're enjoying some better better weather than uh, than us up here in Cleveland, though today, huh? <laughs> yeah, we got lucky. We're in we're in Orlando, Florida now. We just missed that that crazy hurricane. Um, so yeah, it's really nice weather right now um, in Orlando. Um, but yeah, our show tomorrow in Tampa or St. Petersburg got, got canceled. Just, they got hit really hard, unfortunately. So yeah, yeah. But the weather's good right now so far where I am. <laughs> good, good, good. So usually when I have people on for the first time, I like to get a quick background. So do you, uh, remember originally what you wanted to be when you grew up? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I always, when I, I started playing drums, like really little so i always knew i wanted to do you know something with music uh as like a really little kid but i remember being like interested in going into the the military and and stuff like that when i was you know younger but of course i i, I just went down the full uh music route yeah yeah I chose a different hairstyle and everything right yeah exactly <laughs> exactly but um yeah um that's the only other thing I can really think of. Uh, but yeah, I've always just, cause I started playing drums when I was like banging away when I was like three or four years old. And I really started learning at like six or seven years old. So I've always just remember always wanting to be a drummer and go to school for it and stuff like that. Nice. And then who are like, what, uh, 
music uh, caught your ear at a young age, at that young age that uh, kind of influenced you going that route? Um, the the American Idiot record by Green Day. Um, there's this song called uh, Jesus of Suburbia, and it yes. has all those cool drum fills like da na 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 diggity gut diggity gut diggity gut dun dun. <laughs> you know, so and as, yeah. as a as a nine year old, I think I was like nine or ten when that came out. So yeah, as a, as a kid, those that part, and I was already playing a little bit, right? So I was already playing for a couple of years. And I remember that part being like, whoa, that's crazy. So um, yeah, it was that record. Then I. Um, and then as you know, started getting into heavier music, I was really, really into Ozzy Osbourne with Randy Rhodes and Tommy Aldridge. Tommy Aldridge is my favorite drummer even still now. And I remember them being like my heroes growing up, that lineup with, with Ozzy and Rudy and uh, Randy, Tommy and uh, Don Erie on keys. So that whole lineup that, you, you know, the tribute to Randy Rhodes album, that live album with Randy, yeah. that was like my just you know I, I would be playing it non-stop i still am listening to it constantly so those were nice. kind of my two my two records there the tribute record and then uh american idiot <laughs> nice and yeah then what was it that you started uh you know uh playing out my first show was when i was like 13 years old at like with an actual band i mean i did like some recitals as a kid you know but like um with a band i was like 13 it was like some i forget what, what what it was for but it was for a benefit of some some charity event but it was a band i was in like eighth grade or seventh grade or something like that and um yeah it was just you know friends from school getting together and playing you know so that was like when i started playing some shows and like that age, you know, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, you know, around that that time frame there. And what was the uh, music scene like in in your hometown? Uh, in New England, it was very very good. Um, my first like real band, uh, Seven Spires, which I had done for like nine ten years. Um, I remember when we were first starting, just the, when we were just playing locally and stuff. I mean. It was a really active metal scene, which was very cool. And a lot of really great musicians up in up in New England that I met there. A good friend of mine, Joey Conception, you know, is now with Arch Enemy. A good friend of mine, Nick Petrino, he's playing with D. Snyder now. Uh, and there's 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 more too, but those are the some I can think of off the top of my head that I've just met in that scene growing up. So yeah, there was very very good musicians around there, and it's uh, right where I went to school too, to, in college in Boston. So very nice. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So then, uh, you know, the early influence with Green Day and then and then you get involved, start playing in the in the in the metal scene. Uh, what was it? When when was it that uh, you got, uh, you know, got involved with Testament? Just like when I first heard them or you just mean like when I started playing with them now? Uh, well, yeah, like when you first uh, started playing with them. Um, okay, sorry. So, what was the question then? Uh, what was it like, or something? Like, what, yeah, what, yeah. When when did you get like? How did that come together for you? And how did you get involved with Testament then? Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, basically, you know, Gene uh, had left the band, uh, and uh, Eric and I kind of got hooked up. I sent him some some videos of me playing the stuff, and um, all of a sudden, Dave called and he's like, "Hey, I'm looking." looking for a gig and you know he was already in the band before so they went with him for a little bit kind of nostalgic for the fans to could do some stuff in the gathering really really cool but Dave's schedule is super busy so Eric was even just he goes hey we're gonna need you to fill in a little bit if that's cool and I'm like yeah absolutely so I started I, I filled in for them in September of 2022 for like the first third of that leg of the tour and then Dave came back um, he had some stuff with the misfits i think at that time or mr bungle and uh yeah then that, that was his last tour he finished that out and then he's like hey i'm going to focus on my other projects it was cool his brief you know brief return good cool for the fans very nostalgic and then he he left and then the, i kind of just took took over right after that so it was kind of a long you know cool process of it you know because we eric and i started started talking and then dave Dave came back and then it worked out good because it was like, okay, well, his schedule's busy, so 
we know we're going to need you to fill in anyway. So I started filling in and then, yeah, that's just, that's just what happened. So it was really, really cool. And then you, you'd mentioned, you know, Gene leave, Gene, you know, Gene Hoagland leaving the band and then, you know, Dave comes back for a little bit. I mean, you got these two legendary drummers and now you're coming in. What, what kind of like, I mean, what was that feeling like, like coming in, uh, you know, how, how much, was there a lot of pressure or, you know, you just kind of slid right in? I mean, there was definitely in my brain a lot of pressure, right? You know, so, um, but uh, the guy, I mean, when we started playing together, it just felt so natural and right. So it's been, it's just was kind of, I don't know, it kind of just really worked right away. I feel like, of course, in my brain, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, you know <laughs> make sure you practice 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 and i'm still always practicing and trying to learn and stuff but gene and dave are now friends so it's uh, of mine now so it's it's cool it's like a cool you know full circle you know so we'll see them at festivals or you know recently gene gene uh, so death to all was playing milwaukee and mr bungle played milwaukee festival and then testament played so we're all in the same you know room nice. again and so yeah it's cool i mean it's everyone it's just uh it's cool to call those guys friends now so yeah i mean uh, that's got to feel pretty good you know like especially i mean you know playing from such a young age you know and uh you know practicing all those fills from you know uh green day and just like <laughs> you know putting in that putting in all that time and then but uh i mean now to be like you know looked at as a peer to some of these legends you know what's that been like so yeah you know you were practicing as at a young age and and kind of looking up to these legends like uh dave and 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 gene and then coming in to fill in basically you know, as a fill-in originally, but now you get together with them and you're looked at as a peer. I mean, what's that feel like? Um, I guess it's feeling good because we're all becoming great friends. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just like, uh, you know, they've been very receptive to my creative input on the new album. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it just feels right. I guess is is how I, is the best way I can describe it. It's, you know, the sh we were the shows seem very effortless now. We're very, I, I think anyway, it feels like we're getting really tight, and uh, I'm just ex yeah, I'm just uh, excited that it's it's uh, working out. We're all getting along, you know, going and getting good food, and you know, nice, and having nice. a beer together, and. Hang, we have a lot of uh, similar interests and stuff, so um, it's just yeah, it's it's feeling right, and it's uh, it's been a good, and I'm really excited for people to hear uh, the new album as well. And, and then, uh, like, you know, going from like you know learning, uh, you know, Green Day's American Idiot to now like you know learning uh, legendary albums like The Legacy and and the new order and stuff. Uh, what was that that like? And uh, you know, kind of just kind of practicing that and learning that and playing those down. But now being like you said, now you're contributing to the new sound of Testament going forward. Um, yeah, it was cool learning those first two records front to back because um, doing these tours uh, as like those uh, like the anniversary tours for them you know those two records and celebrating them it's been cool because it's it's super nostalgic for the fans that grew up with them in the same you know they grew up with those albums and stuff but it's also really cool because i'm seeing a lot of uh you know people my age as well and you know or, or in their 30s or 20s or something like that or even even kids like that were that are you know teenagers or even you know little kids on their parents back you know seeing it and so it's it's cool that they can also now experience these these records uh and you know it kind of get that old school you know bay area thrash style show from what it was like back when they were you know first starting out as well so and it's, it's been cool for me too because i mean i i, I also grew up uh, listening to a lot of these songs so it's good to be a part of the celebration of the anniversary of these records 
Yeah, so, you know, grow, grow up listening to them and get to be a part of the celebration and stuff. But then now actually, like, you know, working every day, you know, on the road with, like, uh, you know, what's it been like working with Chuck Billy? Fantastic. He's my uh... – so I have a kind of an individual relationship, I'd say, with, with with everyone. And then when we all get together, it's it's really cool too. But Chuck Chuck and I love movies and uh, like TV series and stuff like that. So especially in Europe, when we have like the double decker bus uh, at the end of the night, we'll go up in that back lounge and like last last tour in Europe, we watched like three seasons of Fargo. Uh, he was kind of getting me hooked on that. So I still got a few more seasons left. We watched The Boys together, The Reacher. Uh, there's another one, too, had uh, John Berthall in it. Oh, The Punisher. So we were watching, like, a nice. bunch of series and stuff together, and we kind of nerd out about that. Uh, and it's been great. And, uh, yeah, it's been fantastic working with Chuck and Eric and Steve and Alex, everybody. Yeah, and then speaking of, uh, you know, the all the guys, but what's been, what's it been like? I mean – you know, not just the age difference, but coming in and being able to kind of like uh, sit under that learning tree, so to speak. Um, I mean, I always learn from anybody I play music with, I think. You know, I'm always receptive to, I mean, I'm a music student, right? So I'm receptive to learning as much as I can. So writing this new record with Eric I've learned a lot and how he's done it for so long and you know what he likes to do but then he's also been open to my my uh, creative input as well and uh, yeah I, I feel like I already said that so I don't want to be a broken record but yeah that's kind of what it's like but each individual guy is is I have a good relationship with like I said Chuck we you know watch our shows and stuff and then Eric and I we love splurging and getting good food and steve is like into a lot of the same funny stuff so we have the same sense of humor and alex is like was also a music student so we get to nerd out about that and then you get us all together and then we have our own you know way of hanging out all together as well so it's it's just it's it feels good and feels right nice nice and now you know i mean obviously you you're building that camaraderie with with the band being now a member but uh, how has it been, you know, how has the reaction been to, you know, the fans? You say you see all the all ages coming to the shows, but how, how have you been welcomed by the fans into the fold? So far, they've been very welcoming to me. Yeah, so I, I feel like uh, it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, and then uh, and, uh, no one's been uh, rude yet to me. So <laughs> if that's what no you're rotten asking, fruit but, or yeah. vegetables thrown at you or nothing, right? Yeah, so. no, no, it's been great. <laughs> um, I'm just doing my best, you know, to to keep the, you know, the these the songs we're playing now they're already written, right? So I'm just doing my best to, um, you know, honor them and respect them as the original, but also throw in some flavor and think like, okay. What would I have done if I was in this session, you know, with Eric back then, too? You know, even just thinking about what we were writing this time. So, um, obviously, I'm not changing things, but every now and then I'll throw a little extra stuff in there or accent a certain thing or add a little double bass or something like that, you know. Nice, nice. And then, uh, you know, the, you've been on the Clash of the Titans tour with Creator and, uh, you know, Possessed. Um I, I, you guys came through the legendary Cleveland Agora. You know, what yeah. was your experience like at, uh, in Cleveland when you came through? Cleveland was, was, was great, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, it was, yeah, because all the days sometimes blend in together, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> being on the road. But, I mean, there, there hasn't really been like a – like a bad show on this tour. I mean, if I remember correctly, Cleveland was a fantastic show, fantastic crowd. And yeah, I mean, experience has been very good. So, and every, every time I play in Cleveland, even with, with when I was with seven spires too, it was it's a great, great place. Yeah. The Agora has got a lot of history to it. So, you know, yeah, really cool oh, to have yeah. you guys there. And that week was like just an amazing week there for metal. I think it was like you guys, on Tuesday night, and then Hatebreed was on Wednesday, and then I think Thursday was like 
Black Dahlia murder. It was just like, you know, oh, yeah. you guys That's were awesome. shaking the paint off the walls for sure that week. Were, were you at the show? Uh, yeah, I, uh, and uh, well, um, I ended up not making the, uh, the, your guys' show because I had a family thing that came up that interfered with our, uh, interview, That's unfortunately, right. but right. I had, uh, but I had my, uh, my photographer there and she got a lot of good shots of, oh, of good. you guys playing and stuff. So, um, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately I missed it, man. I was pretty bummed out, but, uh. Wow. You well, know. you'll see it next time <laughs> yeah. when we have the new record out. Yeah, fam family stuff Kate got in the way. You know what? It's, yeah, how it's family, like. family first. Age. Absolutely. But uh, what's what's it been like? You know, being out on the road with uh, Creator and uh, and Possessed so far. How's how's that interaction been going? Well, cool. I mean, the Creator guys we toured with last year too in South America, so we were already pretty familiar with each other, and then. Yeah, I mean, just we all, you know, hang out when we can, when time allows, and then possessed as well. Uh, all great dudes, really, all you know, just amazing guys. Very heavy, <laughs> you know. Yeah. They're, they're legends as well. So I grew up listening to them as well. So it's just, it's, it's very, very cool. Uh, and they're very good guys, and they're killing it every night, possessed and creator. So yeah, it's been, it's been great. And I'm excited because then we're we're going out with Creator again right after this in, in Europe with Anthrax. Okay, so. yeah, that's that was going to be my next question. After this this tour wraps up, what what's next on the agenda for you guys? Yeah, yeah, we just got you know a couple one off shows and then uh, uh, and then uh, the European tour with Creator and Anthrax. That's the next uh, the next thing there. Nice, nice. And then, and then just uh, getting the record done. Just getting the record done and. Uh, you know, hopefully touring that next year. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah, it's almost done. So I'm very excited about it. Nice. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask, like how far along you guys have been with the, the process. And, uh, it, it would probably be done right now if we didn't have the last European tour and then this tour and then the next one after. So we only have that time in between everything to track, but my drums are done. I recorded those earlier this year, Eric and I, and, and, you know, of course, with Chuck and Alex and Steve, we, you know, we all finished the writing, um, you know, earlier this year. And then, um, but yeah, Eric and I were constantly getting together and working on the record very closely, the two of us, um, all last year, too. So, um, uh, yeah, that's just, um, uh, it's, it's uh, good to finally start hearing how they'll be you know, like the final products, you know, so that my drums are done. Eric's rhythms are pretty much done. Chuck's almost done. Steve's pretty much done the bass. Uh, Alex just has a, you know, we got solos to do, uh, you know, it's just kind of like the nitty gritty stuff, like the solos and harmonies and, uh, you know, the little, the little details. And then of course there'll be some revisions and, and stuff like that, but it's really, it's getting, it's getting there. So. Nice. Yeah. And then, um, like, you know, if you could, with everything that you've been learning on this journey and where you're at today, if there was a message you could send back to like your 12 year old you, what would it be? Uh, 12 year old me, um, I would just say for anybody, I just, uh, sorry, just a message for any upcoming musician, you mean? Is that the question? Well, no, I mean, looking back at yourself, if there's anything you learned along the way, you know that you'd want to you'd want to tell yourself is there anything or you just would stick to the plan as as it's happened huh uh yeah maybe uh just the things i always say for things like that is just try to be humble uh be receptive to learn have a beginner's mindset maybe because when i was 12 and 13 and they're on that high school you know age i was very uh I guess like it, music snobby, I guess. I was like, if it's not heavy, it sucks. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't like jazz or funk, great. Right? It has to be really heavy, you know, only metal and blah, blah, you know. And so I would, uh, then as I got older, of course, you know, I had more, you know, I started studying jazz and all kinds of other stuff like that. So I guess maybe if I would say to my 12 year old self is to just always keep a beginner's mindset and you know, be open to learning, 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 and practicing, and 
just yeah just doing your best you know so that's that's really that's really all i can say for that <laughs> yeah gotcha and then uh i know that uh you know we're we're a little short on time but i wanted to ask you a couple of questions i normally ask my guests before we sure. get ready to wrap up yeah um you were talking about some of the early influences, you know, leading you on the journey, but who are your top three artists that you're listening to today? Uh, bands or drummers? Uh, bands. Bands. Okay. Um, been listening to a lot of um, Obscura. Uh, you familiar with them? No. So Obscura, it's like technical death metal. Um I really like the Vortex Omnivium record, so I've been listening to that a lot. I've been listening to a lot of Necrophagist, uh, or Phagist, uh, the Epitaph record. And um, I listen to a lot of Greek music as well. So I've been listening to this Greek band called Trio Bel Canto. Um, and nice. uh, very not metal, but <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you know, has I guess it has some kind of like, metal aspects to it as far as like the greek bazooki you know the way you know, the, 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 you know they shred you know so um yeah uh that's what i've been listening to right now and then i i've, I've been listening to a little bit of lorna shore too nice and then is uh you know is there a class jet you feel should be you know being uh having that beginner's mindset and student for life is there a class you, that you feel should be mandatory before graduating high school today? A class that should be mandatory. Yeah. Uh, I know they have like economics classes, but maybe something about like preparing to, you know, do your taxes and, <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, filing and writing stuff off and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like being, you know, not that the stuff you learn there isn't useful. Of course, it's all useful. It gets you to think, and you know. But I feel like having a class like that would be really cool. Which I'm sure it exists somewhere. At least when I went, I mean, I had an economics class, but it wasn't like. I mean, but also when you're that age, though, too. I mean, you're not really. It's hard to grasp some of those concepts, too. You know, <laughs> so yeah. I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, maybe something like that would be really cool. Yeah, that's usually the number one answer I, I get, you know, something with oh, really? finances oh. and taxes whenever I, I ask that question. clever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's just showing what we're lacking here in, 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 in the States, more, uh, you know, getting people ready for uh, to handle their money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then who are three people who've inspired you and you can credit for making you the person you are today? Um, I would say, uh, my parents, of course, and then my, my drum teachers, specifically, uh, Dave DeCenso, James Murphy, and Steve Michaud, and, um, yeah, I, I, I would just leave it at that, because that's more than three people, you know, so my mentors growing up, and then my, my parents, and stuff, I feel like that's, a you know, um, you know, maybe some good teachers I've had uh, at school too, but yeah, I feel like that's, that would be my answer there. Good. And then, um, what was your, uh, favorite toy as a child? Oh, um, probably does it have to be, uh, like a toy toy or does it going to be like, a like, it, like involve like electricity and stuff like, like a gaming thing? Um, I would say a toy toy. <laughs> Uh, let me think, because I do remember. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I didn't like. Uh, oh, I, I used to play with um, a lot of these toy like cars, like wind up cars, or um, what's it called? The thing. Uh, oh, Beyblades. <laughs> you ever heard of heard of those? When you 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 wind the thing, uh, it's I don't know, it just spins in a circle. And these yeah. two, they hit, they hit each other, and the last one standing. There's like arenas, like like a whole rinks for them, and stuff like that. I remember really liking that as a as a kid, you know, in like elementary school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember those. Yeah, or like yeah. or like Nerf guns or something like that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
And then do you have any uh, organizations uh, or causes that you support and encourage others to check out? Um, the, um, oh, what's it called? It's, uh, my wife donates every year for Christmas. I think it's uh, St. Jude's or something. It's the, uh, cancer, uh, research or cancer where kids are and stuff like cancer treatment for kids and, yeah, and stuff St. like Jude's. that. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah. St. Jude's. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, we, and then the, the military, the, of course, you know, and everything. So, um, yeah, I, I would, I would say just stuff like that, you know? Um, nice. Yeah. And then speaking of the military, any message you have for our members that are currently serving overseas? Uh, thank you for your service. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's amazing what they do. And then uh, anybody that uh, – any new fans out there that might be actually one of the ones that hasn't, you know, heard of Testament yet and want to check check out Testament and what you guys are doing and, uh, you know, even, you know, follow you on your journey, where would you send them? Um, probably to a show. That would be <laughs> great. Uh, experience it live. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, maybe for maybe for an album, I would say my my like one of my favorites is the Dark Roots of Earth album, uh, um, or the latest one, the Titans of Creation one. Good places to start, of course, but um, or the Gathering maybe even too. So um, yeah, I mean Testament has a really good catalog. I think it's it's there's not really a bad record. I don't think so, um, in my opinion, of course. But yeah. Nice, nice. I would say a show is a good place to start, though. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like the live experience. I mean, you know, it's like we get all, you know, we we can jam, we can stream, you know, any song in our, on our earplugs. But it's like I miss the old days of either experiencing it live or putting headphones on and listening to the album, you know, front to back, you know. Right. And, and then, um. You know, before I get ready and wrap up with you and let yeah. you go, do you mind doing me one last favor? Sure, sure. And uh, cut a promo ID for the show. Just introduce yourself and you're listening to today's Boondoggle. Boondoggle, sure. Let me know. Let me know when. Yeah, whenever you're ready. All right. Hey, everyone. This is Chris Dovis of Testament, and you're listening to today's Boondoggle podcast. Awesome. Was that Man, good or Chris, do you want me to redo it? No, that was perfect. Perfect, Chris. No, thank you, man. Thank you for your time, man. Uh, and uh, glad we were able to make this happen. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the the next album. And, and uh, yeah, we'll have to do this. We'll have to do this again once it's released or something. Yeah, for sure, man. For All sure. Right. All right. Thank thanks you for a lot, having man. me. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Ask some good questions, so it was a good time. Awesome. Thank you, man. Take care. Charlie Kendall's Metal Shop is now on Instagram. Just search CK Metal Shop and you got us. The latest metal news and Metal Shop Showtime, along with all the metal that matters. Metal Shop on Instagram. Looking to sell your car quickly and for top dollar? At buyyourcars.net, we make it easy. Whether your vehicle is new, used, or even damaged, we'll buy it in any condition. Fast offers, quick cash, and hassle-free transactions. What more could you ask for? Just visit buyyourcars.net, enter your vehicle information, and get a fast offer within minutes. Ready to sell? Call us today at 770-815-0342 or fill out the contact form at buyyourcars.net. Get cash fast for your car the easy way. BuyYourCars.net. Selling your car has never been easier.